So I know the answer is probably kind of obvious. But yes. Carl, who do you think has the best chest in Baywatch? David Hasselhoff. During the 1990s, Baywatch was a cultural juggernaut, and despite the fact it ran for 11 seasons and starred some of the most famous people in the world at the time, the company who originally owned the rights to the concept literally thought it was worth less than a couple of Big Macs. Baywatch was a hugely popular show. It was, yes. So how was that ever worth that little money? Because the first season didn't actually do all that well, and according to the people who created Baywatch, like NBC, the studio they got to like, you know, buy it and distribute it, I argued with them every step of the way about making the show different from what we know Baywatch to be. So what did NBC want to do with Baywatch? Well, they didn't think the idea of a bunch of supermodel looking motherfuckers running around half naked sopping wet rescuing people was sexy enough. I should be clear, it's not sexy in that definition. It's like the definition of like, you know, we need to make it more exciting and like, you know, dangerous. Like we want you to have the lifeguards running around with guns. We want it to be a gritty crime drama. And the creator's like, no, we just want it to be a show about lifeguards. You know, rescuing people. Like, but that's not a good idea. Like, how do you make that interesting? How's that ever gonna run for like, you know, more than a couple episodes? Reminder, there were 240 odd episodes of Baywatch, so they managed to somehow find, you know, enough plot threads to do with that. And they were like, yeah, we just, we want David Hasselhoff running around with a gun. And the crazy like, we don't want that in our show. That's not what Baywatch is. And like, as well, apparently NBC didn't even like the name Baywatch. Like, they had to fight to keep the name. They wanted to change it up that much. To what? I don't know. So much shit, probably. It's something not as good as Baywatch. Yeah. But it's, it's hilarious to me that, like, how short-sighted, like, studios and networks seem when you tell stories like this. It's like, yeah, we don't think, you know, this premise of lifeguards rescuing people is an idea with legs and then it went and run for 11 seasons and had over 200 episodes <laughs> it's ridiculous so you wanted guns they didn't think it had legs that show's got both guns and legs it does doesn't it like david hasselhoff's got fucking two of them i would want him to be in the meeting when they said that and they said like we need we need to sex this show up we need it to be like you know a gritty crime drama we want lifeguards stalking around with guns and go we've got them david boom <laughs> We don't think the show's got legs. Pamela, do! She didn't appear till the later season, but I get oh, the point. Okay. Someone here's not a true Baywatch fan. <laughs> I haven't watched the it. The thing is though, that first season was very different to what Baywatch became because the, like, the budget was so high for each episode. And that's one of the reasons that NBC wanted it canceled in addition to all of like, you know, the behind the scenes arguments. It's like, it costs too much money to produce. Like we're getting like tepid reviews for the episodes themselves. And we don't think like the idea has like you know enough legs to like carry on for multiple seasons. We don't want to fund it anymore. The thing is though, two of the three people responsible for the creation of Baywatch, Michael Burke and Douglas Schwartz, did think the idea of Baywatch could be popular and sought to get the rights to the show for themselves. Was there a particular reason why they thought it was going to do well, considering it had poor ratings? Yeah, it's because they kept getting phone calls from like you know people in Europe who'd bought the syndication rights. And they were asking, like, are there any more episodes of this Baywatch show? It's doing really well. And that's telling them, like, well, no, it's been cancelled. And they'd respond with, oh, that's a shame. If you ever do make any more episodes, let us know. We would like to buy them. So they thought, well, if there's clearly a market for it, just maybe it's not in the US. So they sort of, you know, get the rights to the show for themselves. So they can, like, you know, start shopping it around, see if anyone actually wanted to fund it. So did they have to go to NBC to get the rights? No, because NBC just distributed it and funded the episodes. Who actually owned the rights at the time was a company called GTG, which had gone under. So obviously they didn't really give all that much of a fuck. And the rights belonged to a guy called Grant Tinker, who Burke and Schwartz approached and asked him, so like, that Baywatch idea, can we buy it off here? And apparently he had so little faith in the idea, he laughed when they asked him and said, you can have it for $10. Yeah, $10 for exclusive worldwide distribution rights to the concept of Baywatch. So all they wanted was $10? There was one singular other proviso they asked for, and that was, if you ever manage to make another episode of Baywatch, we want $5,000. And the deal was, every subsequent episode you make after that, we want another $5,000, which sounds like a lot of money, because it is, but... It's not a lot of money considering like, how much an episode of Baywatch cost to produce and how much they made in syndication rights and all that bullshit. Like, $5,000 was basically like 
that's chump change, the amount of money they were making per episode, selling it all over Europe, and then back in America when it became popular again. So what happened after they got the rights to Baywatch? They put the word out they were accepting offers for syndication for new episodes of Baywatch. And then what happened? A German company offered them $400,000 per episode. Why? Because David Hasselhoff was massive in Germany at the time and still is to this day, and the company reason anything starring David Hasselhoff will be a success in our country, we'll fucking buy this shit. Why is Hasselhoff so popular in Germany? I don't actually know. I think it's something to do with his music just being really popular over there, and then Knight Rider was super popular as a result. And that's why they have the joke in um, Dodgeball of David Hasselhoff being in charge of the German team. Because, <laughs> like, David Hasselhoff just there in a leather jacket screaming at him in German. You just... $400,000 an episode sounds like a lot of money, but Baywatch cost a lot of money to produce, so the pair still need a bit more, and they managed to secure extra funding from uh, the British broadcaster ITV. And they had a proviso that we'll do this on the condition that you make the show family friendly and take out like, you no, know, there's no there's no violence against like women and children, no guns, that sort of thing, which was ideal because that's the show they wanted to make. Were there any other provisos? Keep it under budget. So the creators managed to solve that problem by firing all the writers, get rid of half the cast and asking David Hasselhoff to take a massive pay cut, which he did after they offered him an executive producer's credit on the show. So was he basically buying that title with a pay cut, or did he actually have any input? No, he did have a lot of creative control over the show. Like one of the things that he insisted upon is that his character was going to have a son, and they were originally going to cast, I think it was um, Leonardo DiCaprio, they were going to cast his son, he was about 14, 15 at the time, and David Hasselhoff said no, because I want this show to go on for like 10 seasons, and in 10 seasons he'll be 20 odd, hire a young kid, because then in a couple of seasons he could be a teenager then, and he can grow with the show. And there's even this great rumour, this like story that's like, you know, percolated through the industry, like whispered by interns and that sort of thing, that David Hasselhoff almost got Pamela Anderson, like, you know, taken off the show before she was even hired, because he walked in and saw her, noticed how massive her breasts were, and immediately stormed off, going, this is a family show, and refused to let her be cast. And um, according to him, he's like, no, no, I always want to be on the show. But the idea that he was just like, he's just, the gargantuan nature of these breasts made him just like uncomfortable. He couldn't handle the size of these breasts. He's like, children will not be able to like, you know, just like comprehend like, these breasts. Like they are beyond comprehension for the mind of a child. We need to protect them. <laughs> It's, it's a fucking pair of tits, half the population's got one, it's not a big deal. But apparently it was with Pamela Anderson though, because her costume, her tits were so massive that she had a lot of side boobs showing, because the costume literally didn't fit properly. <laughs> yeah. And there was really big concerns that like, ITV might have an issue with that. And so obviously like, British TV doesn't care about sex and stuff, so like, they got away with it in that regard. And then obviously the other places who were buying it were like Germany. And given what I know about European culture, I don't think they care that there's a woman with huge knockers running about. It went from, this is a family show, to how do we make the breasts look even sexier? <laughs> it's like, they went from storming off, like we can't have her in that costume too. Fuck him, just make a sprint. I'm surprised they didn't go to the effort of just like fucking, just smack it with a whiffle bat or some shit before a take. It's ridiculous. Oh God. Just, just the fact that like, David Hasselhoff was just worried like, kids will not be able to comprehend just the enormity of these breasts. No, we, we both know what it was. It what? was that he wanted his chest to that's be the what, only, the only yeah, mighty chest. That is chest. a rumor that's gone around. Like the one of the, the, like, you know, the alleged reason that he didn't want Pamela Anderson being cast is that he didn't want focus being taken away from him by her breasts. Like, he didn't want his shine being blocked by his giant boobs. <laughs> and then he changed his mind after he saw her in costume and was like, hot damn. I don't mind standing next to that for six hours a day. The Spongebob movie would have been very different if it had been Pamela Anderson replicated, wouldn't it? <laughs> she, she would be in the back, you know if they did that she would be in the backstroke. But to close off, Burke and Schwartz did manage to secure enough funding to get a second season of Baywatch made, which immediately went into syndication all over the world, eventually making it one of the most popular shows on television in the 90s. And they did all that because they bought it for 10 fucking dollars. So Brad, much of this video has revolved around David Hasselhoff's massive swollen man chest. So I'm gonna put a question to you right now. Does he have the single greatest cameo in movie history? with his appearance in the Spongebob movie, where he just turns up 
introduce himself by name and assume speedboat form. Who are you? I'm David Hasselhoff. Can you think of a cameo that tops that? Because the only one in my mind is potentially David like Bowie's like you know cameo in Zoolander. Yeah. Because again, it's so out of left field and it's so amazing that he's just in the movie randomly and he gets even his own little title card at the bottom. We got like let's dance plays in the background. I believe I might be of service. David Bowie's and David Hasselhoff's are up there. Just keep, like David assumes speedboat form because that's like he's not. He doesn't introduce himself as like, I am David Hasselhoff, a character. He says, I'm David Hasselhoff, the man and the actor. Also, I'm a speedboat. <laughs> it's like so dumb. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think because Hasselhoff, Hasselhoff's always like he's in loads of cameos. Yeah, so he's in Guys of the Galaxy Volume Two, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, he's one of the people that Ego turns into, young Hasselhoff. Oh, he does, doesn't yeah. he? Holy shit! I tried so hard to find the form that best suited you. I was thinking in that one, it's last the Sylvester Stallone cameo, isn't it? Oh, yeah, he's in that one. Because yeah. he wants to be in the, in the next movie. Because like, one of the other people in that scene, I think it's Miley Cyrus, voices the robot, <laughs> which is a fucking great one. But, oh man, like, can you think of any like, other random cameos that always crack you up? There's George Clooney as the dog in South Park. Oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah. I think as well, it's because George Clooney loves South Park. He was well up for it. So people don't know, like, early seasons of South Park, like, it was word of mouth it got popular with. And a lot of celebrities began asking like their agents, like, can I be on this show? And they, Matt, and Trey, like, Matt Stone and Trey Parker thought it'd be really funny to offer all these big name celebrities really shitty tiny bit roles. And George Clooney they offered him the role of Stan's gay dog Sparky to provide the bark. And George said, yeah, I'll do it. So apparently George Clooney is the reason South Park got popular. You show the original sketch of uh, Jesus versus Santa. Yeah. He shared that um, via email after someone sent it to him. And he's credited as one of the reasons he got managed to get like, you know, accepted for distribution. Because he sent it to so many of his Hollywood friends. Like, what the fuck is this show? It's hilarious. So yeah, he accepted the just Stan's gay dog. Hiya, Sparky. How's it going? <laughs> I missed you, old pal. You really had me scared. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, South Park's got some good ones. Early Simpsons were also quite good for cameos because the celebrity never played themselves. They always played like a character, like a one-shot character. And like the best one there is it's Michael Jackson. Hi, I'm Michael Jackson from the Jacksons. I'm Homer Simpson from the Simpsons. Did you ever hear the story behind that of where he plays, obviously he does the voice of like the guy who thinks he's insane, thinks yeah. he's Michael Jackson. But the singing was done by somebody else because I think he was contractually like obligated not to sing on anything. So what he did is he brought in his like, you know, his officially licensed voice double and got him to do the like, you know, Lisa, it's your birthday and sing that. And he said he did it to troll his brothers because they would, they would call him up the next day and are you in that Simpsons episode? Is that you? And he's like, no, it's not. It's not me. He's like, but it really sounds like you. He's like, no, it's not. 